and welcome to Aviation Careers Podcast. In today's episode, we're going to talk about why I think AI is not going to replace pilots. I know I get this question often and something that I'm really passionate about because that originally is what I studied in college and also in AI and also in computers is what I did uh, when I got out of college. But we're going to talk about that coming up next in this episode. If you do have questions like this one that came up, uh, feedback at aviationcareerspodcast.com. So first of all, let's get into what is artificial intelligence. There's a lot of different definitions that are out there as far as what artificial intelligence is. So we're going to go with one of the ones that I like, uh, and they're all fairly similar, but uh, it's a technology that really allows computers and machines to basically mimic human comprehension, uh, problem solving, learning, uh, autonomy, and creativity, especially now creativity is a big one. But that artificial intelligence is basically machine learning. So let's think, remember what I said because there's many different levels of that. Uh, a good example of machine learning and being able to recognize your voice. And that's what I studied, is recognizing your voice. And that's uh, voice recognition in the 80s was a lot different than it is today because the computing power has changed and also our technologies and our programming has changed quite a bit. Uh, so that's actually something that has, has come forward quite a bit. But I still don't think we're going to replace humans with AI. So um, as far as AI is concerned, has it affected pilot jobs already? In general, in the industry, it has. And for pilot jobs, it has also, okay? Um, but let's, let's talk a little bit about some of the things that it has enabled us to do that are actually even better um, and made our lives safer and more efficient. And remember, safer and more efficient includes, you know, flying through turbulence. Uh, there's systems that are out there that, incorporate turbulence avoidance software, whereas it can look at our route and look at different things that we can we can navigate around that might be turbulent, different areas that might be turbulent is a better way to say that. Um, one of the things that I think is really important is that we embrace AI to the extent where it is usable and to the extent where it'll incrementally change the safety and also our, our comfort and efficiency within the industry, but it's not gonna replace pilots. I think it's important to embrace AI for what it is. Uh, so it's talking, going back to what I just said, where has a, AI replaced certain processes that us as humans do? A great example is m more efficient routing and safer routing, including that turbulence avoidance. Uh, also, the possibility of wake turbulence avoidance. It can do that, too. So there's a lot of different things that AI can do to help us, and those are, those are enhancements. Those are enhancements that, that are there. Um, another great part of AI is maintenance and performance data. Um, it can actually you know, track maintenance issues. Uh, it can actually tra track performance issues for specific airplanes and learn from that different airplane um, based on, you know, its current level of health. Is it good? I always talk about airplanes as far as levels of health. You know, maybe the, air, the engines have worn out a little. They're not putting out as much uh, thrust, that type of thing. It can, it can watch that and then grow and actually maybe give us a little bit better performance data. Uh, some of those have, have already been in place. Um, a good example of where AI, now again, we're going to that broad term of AI, has actually helped in the industry, helped before become more efficient and saved a lot of money is as far as flight engineers are concerned. Remember, we used to always have flight engineers on most of these larger airplanes, and that went away. A good example is on the 737. I like to use that uh, fun fact here is uh, United Airlines, they got rid of their flight engineer. My flight instructor was a flight engineer on the 737. And you're probably thinking, wait a minute, there's no flight engineer on the 737. Well, it was contractual. In other words, every airplane they had had a flight engineer. And now what they did is they said, okay, uh, since we're going to airplanes that don't have flight engineers, we still have that position. It's a professional flight engineer position. Uh, we're still going to you know, grandfather them in for the next 24 months. So you saw people actually flying, and my instructor included, flying around the system uh, and in the jump seat as the flight engineer. Uh, and then eventually that went away. Uh, but that's kind of a fun fact. By the way, my most of my instructors uh, flew in Vietnam. I know I'm a little bit 
showing my age a little bit, but uh, so these guys came out at a really tough time where they didn't have all these technologies, but they were getting there. They were actually uh, improving very uh, dramatically. Uh, another thing that this AI, and the reason I like to embrace AI, is that it actually reduces some fatigue. Remember that a lot of the that planning that I was talking about can be done by computers, and also with the backup of a human, right? So that's been actually terrific. And, and it actually will reduce fatigue, meaning that we won't have to do all those calculations, or we're not using as much of our brain power to do those, say, rudimentary calculations. And of course, that's computerized. Um, and there's a little bit difference between that and AI. Uh, AI is learning from some of those instances where the, they have flown on a certain route where this is actually what happens. So we're going to actually change the way that we do this rounding based on uh, data, empirical data, uh, and AI can learn from that. Um, but remember, always remember that people have to actually program those computers uh, to do that. Uh, the other great thing is autonomous flying. I mean, there's there's some uh, a lot of that's going on. Are we going to replace pilots in the cockpit? Uh, in some instances, we might see that. I don't see it as much in the passenger carrying airlines, and. Uh, and I think that one of the things that we have to look at is um, collateral damage, right? And also, is the is the public going to actually want to see uh, nobody in the cockpit uh, and have even remote flying? I don't think we're ready for that. I also feel that there's not enough technology sensing uh, and recording and communication that, and that's not here yet, that will allow us to actually quickly you know, comply or quickly respond to certain emergency situations, which you have a human being with all these senses that is bringing in all this information and data. We can do that with a computer, but it's not going to replace the human. There's a lot of things we try to keep doing to replace that human brain we haven't been able to do. Um, but it's, again, that's AI, it's computer learning. And are we going to get to that point? I really don't think so. Um, but but going back to what I was saying as far as the replacing uh, piles in the cockpit, the only way I can see that is possibly in the realm of cargo. We've already seen that with rest rules. Um, you know, there is the fact that they are re <laughs> they, the government has recognized that there is more of a risk to the general public when we're in a passenger carrying environment as opposed to a cargo environment. Uh, to put it bluntly, you're going to lose two, maybe three cargo pilots as opposed to 300 passengers. Uh, so that's that's the difference there. So that's something to, um, that I th you've even seen it. Our, our, uh, our rest rules reflect that. Um, I'm not saying I agree with that. I'm just saying that's the, the way it is. We have accepted collateral damage. It's a lot like even in the military, we, we accept certain collateral damage and uh, when we're out in the battlefield, that type of thing, but we don't do that as civilians, and I don't think we really should. So uh, something that I think we'll, we'll see more of is replacing possibilities of, uh, of somebody in the cockpit uh, as far as the, in the cargo realm, and even maybe autonomous flying there. Um, but the other part, too, that I think is great with AI is the possibility with, of more efficient flying from the automation, from the autopilot, but also with the the ability to, you know, for the pilot to intercede. And that's going to be something we're going to see more and more of. Um, but so going back to the original question, will AI, re AI replace pilots? Uh, I think the real question is, will AI replace humans? Uh, no, but I think it's going to make our lives a lot safer and uh, a lot more efficient, uh, a lot easier. Again, uh, look at autopilot, look at auto land. Uh, there is a certain amount of machine learning and certain autopilots uh, that haven't been implemented in, in the realm that I know of in, in uh, cargo and also in passenger carrying. But they're out there, um, and it's, it's really, I think it's really cool to embrace this new te technology. AI will augment the human process and help us focus more on complex tasks. Again, let's think about the flight engineer. You know, a lot of our aircraft now are so automated. Um, look at uh, airplane I fly now and Airbus. A lot is automated based on what is going to happen when something in the airplane reaches a certain limit or there's an input from a certain system that tells the automation to do X, Y, and Z. Um, and that's, that's somewhat 
of that's automation, but then there's on top of that some machine learning that can happen. Uh, so I think it's going to make some of our jobs easier. Um, let's talk a little bit about how to make uh, our jobs or, or what jobs we can have that will actually uh, take advantage of AI. And one is in computers, obviously. Um, you know, the airlines, uh, cargo, everybody is going more towards AI in the use of learning and towards machine learning, towards more efficient flying, etc. Again, there always has to be a human interaction in there because we as humans, I mean, at many years of flying and you can talk to anybody out there that's flown for a long time, we have taken all this data in and we're able to process it in ways that the computer cannot. And, and a lot of times we have this, what we call the inner sense, right? That we can say, hey, wait a minute, I'm not going to go in that direction. I think that this is a better route and this is why. Uh, and to put that into computer learning terms is going to take a while. Is it impossible? Uh, not impossible, but I don't think it's very practical right now. Uh, and again, you're going to have to get buy-off. So what jobs can you get that will take advantage of AI? A big one is in computers. Uh, there's a lot of different computer jobs out there that that focus on AI and STEM and, and aerospace. Aerospace, including aviation. Of course, uh, we're going to start putting so those scholarships in there. Of course, uh, I lean that way because I'm a computer scientist and you know, I was very much into AI, uh, and it's really something that that I I enjoy. Uh, so that's another thing I want to do. I want to promote that because that was something that I enjoyed. I like flying airplanes better, but I still think AI is an amazing field. We're gonna put those in that that scholarships guide we have. And by the way, you can get one of those for free. Go on aviationcuriouspodcast.com slash free. And don't forget, uh, our sponsor actually has a coupon for a free scholarship, and that's actually using the coupon code STRATUS. This uh, sponsor of this podcast actually is Stratus Financial, and they give private student lending for pilots, and they are pilots themselves, which is great. Uh, and as a sponsor of this podcast, of course, they're going to give away a free scholarship, but also they want you to consider uh, whether you're financing your dream of flying or simplifying the process by taking care of your student loans. You know, their efficient, hassle-free funding can connect you to a life of your dream of becoming that professional pilot sooner than you ever thought possible. And you can find out more on the website, stratus.finance. Uh, and we appreciate all the scholarships guys. They've given away, I think it's 250 scholarships guys so far. So thank those folks. Even if uh, you don't use our financing, thank them. And I know there's a lot of scholarships out there uh, and they're used throughout the year, but this is one of the fields, AI, AI within aerospace, uh, and also uh, just in general, flying. You know, there's lots of different scholarships for get multi-engine, private instrument, commercial, pay for everything. That's for sure. Oh, the other thing too is that, you know, one of the things that we look at is hiring and how AI has affected hiring and that type of thing. We do deep dives uh, in our group coaching mentorship. And uh, if you get a chance, check that out. I have a link uh, in on the sidebar. It's called Group Coaching Mentorship. And we meet once a month. It's only $20 a month. And I'll shoot you a coupon if you want. Uh, it's uh, Coach It Forward is the name of the coupon. If you want to sign up for one month for free, it'll bill you after that. But it's a it's an environment where, you know, first thing we do is we we – gives the success stories. The second thing we do is we actually talk about the industry and update uh, for a short period of time. And then we go into your questions and answers. It's a way you actually have a dialogue with me uh, in, in a very uh, you know collaborative type of manner. But most importantly, we need to think about AI. We need to think about all these different technologies and figure out if it's going to actually place the pilot in the flight deck. Uh, I don't think so. Not now. Not for a long time. Uh, and I don't think ever is it going to reduce the number of pilots, just like the flight engineers. There is that possibility in certain operations. I think it, we might be able to go to autonomous type of flying, uh, but only in certain scenarios. Uh, and that might be uh, scenarios where um, if you know there, if there's collateral damage uh, due to say like a cargo jet going down, it will only only. Gosh, it, it will affect maybe two pilots, and that's uh, kind of like the way the government has, has looked at this. Um, I'm not a big fan of that, that viewpoint, but it is something it seems that the society is, is willing to accept. Any questions, don't forget, aviationcareerspodcast.com slash contact feedback at aviationcareerspodcast.com. We are going to have uh, upcoming air shows. We're going to be at uh, Sun and Fun. We have a booth there. Uh, a, I can't remember the number of the booth, but check out our website. I'll have the booth number on there. Uh, but the most important thing to do is – Right now, um, while you're listening to this uh, or you're watching it on YouTube, is make sure that you take action every day 
to move towards your career goal. Um, a lot of people call those micro actions, and I, I know that, but I like to say it's just taking one step every day to move towards your goal, whatever it may be. Look at some of the other videos out there on YouTube. There's so much you can learn on YouTube, on the internet. If you're getting ready for an interview, go to our pilot interview course. That We have that list out there on YouTube. If you're starting to get ready for that interview, I have all these different questions out there. And of course, we're gonna have the, the one that you can get with the questions and answers. We can take a quiz online. Uh, and that's coming up soon by uh, time Sun and Fun comes around for 2025. But the most important thing you can do for me when you hit the stop button, don't stop there. Make sure you take one step today to move forward in your career and towards your goals. And I know you'll get there quicker than you think. We'll talk to you next episode. Safe flying out there.